Hello and welcome to a special interview for The Wire. Is South Africa on the brink of another surge in COVID cases? And if the answer is yes, what are the implications for the rest of the world? That's the key issue I shall discuss today with Professor of Bioinformatics at the Universities of KwaZulu-Natal and Stellenbosch and the founder director of the KwaZulu-Natal Research Innovation and Sequencing Platform, Professor Tulio de Oliveira. Professor de Oliveira, a recent article in the New York Times says, coronavirus cases are surging again in South Africa. And I noticed from statistics that between the 1st and the 7th of May, daily cases have increased by almost 225%, and the positivity rate is now significantly above 25%. The paper says the surge has the country now facing a fifth wave. Do you agree with that conclusion? Yes, yes, I do. I do agree with that conclusion. It's quite clear that 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 South Africa, at least from most of the stats, uh, have entered the fifth wave. But this fifth wave is looking very different. Uh, it even looks different than our Omicron uh, BA one wave. So what it means? It means that in infections are spiking. Testing is not as widespread as before, but what it, but hospitalization and deaths are still very, very low. And the most important thing is that South Africa, uh, during this spike of infections, comes from a very low peak of infection. So at the moment, we have uh, less than 300 people in ICUs in South Africa, that's intensive units. Yeah. And, and at the moment, we have over 90% of our COVID beds and placing in, in ICUs empty. So, so, so we think that we, we are in a good position to be able to, to ride this fifth wave. Now, it seems that what's fueling the present wave are the Omicron subvariants BA.4 and BA.5. I gather this is particularly the case in Hateng, in the Western Cape, and in KwaZulu-Natal. What do we know about BA.4 and BA.5? So, so, so we know quite a lot, Red. And the reason for that is that South Africa has one of the most, most advanced genomic surveillance programs in the world. So what we do, we can go from sample to genomes yeah, within days. Yeah. And we, we, we do in a proper uh, survey system that we do a random yeah, proportional selection of all the districts in the country. So not only we know that BA4 and BA5 emerge in Houteng, we don't know if it comes from Houteng, may easily be introduced from outside, but then it's spread through every single province. So nine of the nine provinces in South Africa now has genomes of BA4, BA5. Furthermore, as each time that we identify a variant or, or sub or lineage of a variant, we straight give the, the samples to these very advanced labs that we have in South Africa that's called P3 labs. And so we already have outgrown the BA4 and BA5, and we have exposed to plasma of people that were previously vaccinated and previously infected. So what we know from these two sub-lineages is that they can easily break infection of people that has only been infected, but that if people have been infected and vaccinated or fully boosted vaccinated, the levels of antibodies are still very, very high. And that for sure should protect it through hospitalization and deaths. That's a very important thing you've said, and I'll just repeat that so the Indian audience can fully take it on board. BA4 and BA5 can break the infection of people who've already been infected. In other words, if you have previously been infected by BA1 or BA2, that's no protection against BA4 and BA5. Have I understood that correctly? Yes, especially against BA1. Yeah, because BA1 was the, the big wave of infection of Omicron in South Africa. We didn't have a BA2 wave. But what about protection from vaccination? Is that still good with BA4 and BA5 or is it weaker compared to BA1? It, it seems to be very good, especially uh, for people that have been recently vaccinated or boosted 
or, or for people that have what we call hybrid immunity, because what you have to understand, close to 90% of the population in South Africa got previously infected. So people that got previously infected, if they follow that with even a single dose of the vaccine, the immunity levels go very high. And that's what we are trying to suggest to people that think that they may be protected just from previous infection. They say that, you, especially if you have a booster or a vaccination, then you're going to really be protected from a secondary infection. So this is good news in a sense. People who have been double vaccinated and particularly those who've had a booster as well are well protected against both BA.4 and BA.5. The people who are vulnerable are those who were only infected but not vaccinated, particularly if they were infected by BA.1. They are likely to get BA.4 and BA.5 again. Yes, yes. And also people that have been infected by Delta. Yeah. And the reason for that is not just being previously infected, but the time from the previous infection. Yeah. So what we found that BN4 and BA5 has been uh, circulating at very low levels since uh, January uh, yeah, this year, but only now after the past three or four months of our previous wave, that seemed that with through in, uh, in immunity decrease from previous infections, it can take over. Uh, and again, that's the very important uh, reason to, to have a very advanced genomic surveillance network that can identify quick variants and generate all the, the lab data because that can guide then, then, then the policy and the boosting programs. So the reason why South Africa is experiencing a fifth wave is not because vaccinated people are vulnerable, it's because unvaccinated people whose only protection was an infection from BA1 are vulnerable. That's the reason why there's a fifth wave happening. Yes, yes, that's the reason. And the main reason is because it decreased population immunity to previous infection. Yeah. But but again, I, I, I must repeat that that that's looking like a different wave. Yeah. Despite breakthrough infection at the moment, our hospitalizations are very, very, very low. Yeah. And, and we, we have a high spare coping capacity in our hospital. So so basically what South Africa is doing at the moment with 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 very fast genomic surveillance and falling uh, data. Uh, in a transparent way and also release the data very early, it's almost guiding the world what will happen as new waves come. Absolutely. Now, one of the things that we've read and heard about BA.4 and BA.5 is that both of them have what's called the L45R mutation, which apparently is also found in Delta. Some people have said that this means that BA.4 and BA.5 could have the potential to be as infectious as Omicron, if not more so, but also at the same time, the potential to be as virulent as Delta. Are you finding that to be the case or is that an exaggerated conclusion? So, 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 so that probably would be a valid conclusion if you were in the beginning of the pandemic. But at the moment, what's really protecting from hospitalization and deaths, it is vaccination. And what we know is that we are not in the beginning of the pandemic. We are two years in the pandemic. We have a high percentage of population vaccinated and we have a high percent of the population with hybrid immunity. This means infection plus vaccination. Yeah. So that's what we believe that's really protecting from, from virulence. Yeah? It's very different if, if a variant such as Delta that was a, was a terrible variant, yeah, we have very virulent. But one of the main reasons why, why Delta was so pathogenic and virulent is that it hit the world at a moment that we did not have vaccines and also the population immunity was quite low. But we are in a different time of the pandemic and more than ever, a little push with, with extra boosters and vaccination may really start really moving us to the next phase of the pandemic that may be be what it means wave of infections, but that do not translate into large waves of hospitalizations and deaths, as you have seen in India in the data wave, which I believe that was very traumatic. Absolutely. So what you're saying is the presence of L452R should not be worrying because now we are very well vaccinated and that will protect us from virulent disease. Exactly. We're in the different phase of the pandemic. We have high population immunity, both pro-infection and vaccination. And what we find is that the, the, the population immunity through vaccination is much stronger. So when people do get BA4 and BA5, are they largely asymptomatic and also only suffering from mild disease? Is that the case? Largely asymptomatic or mild disease? 
so again yeah yeah most of people even with all the previous variants will be asymptomatic and 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 have not not very strong symptoms yeah but one thing that we worry in south africa and other countries in the world for example um, you can see very well how how china is so worried now if it is these variants and the sub lineages go and hit the old population that may have like low vaccinated rate or may have got a vaccination like months and months ago yeah and that's and that's why we worry and that's why when we identify variants and lineages that, um, that 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 break to some immunity we highlight that very early to the world because that's the way that we can protect it especially the most vulnerable which means that people who are aged or people whose vaccination was a long time ago and the immunity has worn down are the ones in danger and that means boosters are very important at this point of time to protect people as well Yes, yes, especially before a wave starts. Uh, that, that's the right time because what one wants is to, even if one have a wave of infection, that do not overwhelm the hospitals. And by not overwhelming the hospitals, then you can also have a wave that come with very low restrictions. And for example, people in South Africa, and I believe in most of the world, they, they, they have really enough of restrictions. So that's why we have to act quick and, and, and prepare people with vaccination before waves hit. In, at the moment in India, the uptake of boosters, particularly for people between the ages of 18 and 59, seems to be very small. People are shying away from boosters because they fear that there's no need for them. They think that the worst is over. Is your advice to people, look, don't be complacent, go get your boosters. It's the best protection against BA4 and BA5. Yes, yes, especially people with, with, with more advanced age or with comorbidities, for example, with diabetes, high blood pressure, which I believe that, that that's quite a problem in India and in South Africa. So that's the ones that we have to focus on getting, on getting the booster first. Now, two quick questions before I end. The New York Times article that I mentioned, which also quoted you extensively, says it is unclear if the two subvariants they are talking about BA.4 and BA.5 could surge elsewhere in the world. In other words, it may surge in South Africa, but unlike Omicron and unlike Beta, which then moved on to the rest of the world, BA4 and BA5 may not. Do you believe that the BA4, BA5 may remain localized in South Africa? So, 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 so the first thing is that uh, as, as a scientist, uh, we have to highlight what we don't know. So, so we don't know if it's going to completely spread uh, around the world. And we hope not because South Africa is tired of, 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 of being, being linked as, as a place that spread variants, which again, we, we have no proof that these, these variants or sublineages come to South Africa. We just have a very advanced genomic surveillance network. Yeah? But what we see, we see that the sublineages of Omicron, the different ones, as you had a BA2 wave in Europe, now you have a BA2.21.1 wave in the United States, a BA four and five in South Africa, that's coming more common. So, so now we have a, a, at least four examples of sub-lineages of Omicron that can cause a second wave. Eh? And that's why we, we, we have to still be very focused on, on advancing genomic surveillance and early identifications of, of them. Because what we found in South Africa and around the world with our early identification of Omicron allow countries to prepare. And uh, by preparation, you, you normally have a much less tragic wave. I point out for the audience that even if it is true, but it's not actually because it's been questioned that Omicron began in South Africa, there are some reports that suggest it began in the Netherlands. But even if it's true, South Africa saved the world by the superb genome sequencing your country did and you in particular did. So it doesn't really matter where a variant begins. What matters is how quickly it is detected, how quickly its characteristics and qualities are identified. So you're saying to me, at the moment, we just don't know whether BA4, BA5 will spread in other countries. It hasn't as yet spread very far, but we don't know whether it will or not. That's an open question. Yes, it's an open question. But one thing that we know from see what's happening in the United States, what happened in Europe, what's happening in South Africa, is that once you pass a few months of, of, of the previous wave, yeah, if people do not get a, a booster or vaccinated, especially the ones from previous infection, you do risk a new wave come. That be from BA2, BA2.21.2 or BA4 and BA5. 
and that's very important information. And the less the, the, the less important information is that the word support countries that detect early uh, variants and lineages, because that's the way that we can keep like guiding the world and, and, and not punished. Yeah? South Africa got severely punished from the Omicron BA1. Yeah, this time we did not get from BA4 and BA5. And I think that the world has to really be behind us and highlighting that, that, that this very quick, transparent genomic surveillance can prepare and can save lives and can allow us to move to the next phase of the pandemic. That's one that may have infections, but that's not as deadly. Two last questions, and they're connected with the fact that South Africa does perhaps the world's best genomic sequencing and does it very quickly. At this point of time, are you worried about another Omicron subvariant? I'm not talking about BA4, BA5. I'm now talking about BA.2.12.1. I'm told this has something called the L452Q mutation, which is said to be similar, but not identical with L452R. Is this a worrying variant? So, 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 so that at the moment is a worrying um, a, a lineage of Omicron to the United States of America, yeah, and and maybe like BA four and BA five may may spread everywhere in the world or, or may not, yeah, and that's again why why so important other countries to also step up a genomic surveillance, yeah. In, in, in relationship to the mutation 452 that you highlight many times, uh, it is a mutation that keep popping in in many different variants, was initially identified in the Delta variant, yeah. And then it has been detected thousands of times in, in Omicron, yeah. But now you have these three sub-lineages, uh, BA2.21.1, 2, and BA4 and BA5, that that mutation has been fixated. Uh, and that what it means is that that mutation do give advantage to the virus. And if we stop the virus to mutate, we have to vaccinate and try to stop transmission. That's the only way that we can do it. My last question. One sometimes reads that there is an evolutionary progression in variants as we go from BA1 to BA2 on to BA212, BA2, BA2 12.1, and finally to BA4 and 5, and that these subvariants are becoming more infectious whilst the disease remains relatively mild. Do you agree with that view that there is some sort of evolutionary process happening? So, so, so I am evolutionary biologist. So, 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 so I, I, I disagree that this is coming from the virus itself. But I do agree that the disease is is, is getting less severe. And the main reason why the disease is getting less severe is because the more populations are immune. So, for example, if be if Omicron uh, emerged in two thousand and twenty, would be ten times more deadly than if emerging the end of two thousand and twenty one. What really protected from development of of disease and what call people call a mild uh, variant, yeah, it is really population immunity. And that's our job, and especially India as one of the biggest producers of vaccines in the world, to help, to help not only the country, but the whole world to vaccinate. So when you talk about immunity, you're talking about both natural immunity from previous infection, as well as immunity from double vaccination and boosters. Yes, exactly. And what we show very, very, very clear is that the hybrid immunity, when you mix both, is extremely effective. So for people that have been only infected, yeah, don't, don't, don't really believe that you are protected. But if you get a vaccine after infection, after you clean your symptoms, then your antibody levels will be very high and that's going to really protect you. I thank you, Professor Dolivera, for this interview. In particular, I thank you for explaining in such detail the nature of both the infection created by BA4 and 5, as well as the fact that the disease remains mild, and stressing for an Indian audience the importance of getting boosters and vaccination, because the uptake of boosters, even though it's been available for over two months, in an age group between 18 and 59 in India is still pretty poor. And your message to them is go get that booster. It is the best protection. Thank you very much indeed. Take care. Yeah, thank you. Stay safe. Thank you.